before we get into making our bread dough, we want to preheat our oven to 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And we want to prepare our bread tin because this comes together really quick. I've simply cut a uh, piece of parchment paper to size and then I just hold it down with some oven proof clips, which really just make the task much easier when I need to put it in the tin. Next, we want to actually start our dish. So we want to sieve our uh, baking soda, which is, well, this was really a soda bread, but it's different than what you might have seen traditional other Irish breads to be. And our plain or all-purpose flour. It's not a huge amount here, so it doesn't take too long to sieve them out. We want them to be nice and smooth. Then we add in our salt and that magical wholemeal flour. The wholemeal flour makes this bread incredibly filling, like literally two slices will keep you full for hours. Um, even my six foot eater of a husband says that. So now we want to stir all of those flours together. We want them to be really nicely mixed through because we really want that soda, that baking soda, to be completely incorporated with all the other dry ingredients. Now we add in our room temperature butter and we can, if we've got a pastry cutter, we can absolutely incorporate it uh, with that or we can use a knife or I eventually just gave up and I used my hands because when you use your hands and you're incorporating butter into flour, it's much quicker to know where uh, there are areas that still like butter is like lurking in bigger, bigger clumps or bits. So that's just why I always use my hands. Um, but you're absolutely free to use a pastry cutter or a knife if you prefer. We want to make sure we incorporate that butter really well and that it is really nice and finely mixed into the flour mixture here because the end result or the texture we're going for once we've completed our adding and incorporating that in is like coarse breadcrumbs. So we don't really want there to be large clumps of butter because that will then like melt in our loaf and create like pockets. Um, which is not something we really want to have in the end result. So it doesn't take too long, but I always use this word methodical is what we want to be here because this is kind of like the key to creating the perfect texture. Now in a separate bowl, we want to incorporate our buttermilk. There is a lot of buttermilk in this recipe and boy is it good. And then we want to add in our egg and our honey. Like with any bread recipe, adding a little bit of sweetness just balances out all the flavors. And I think it gives it like a nice warmth. Uh, using honey versus like sugar um, gives this bread a nice warmth. And then we want to just like really like incorporate those together, get them all well mixed through, make sure the egg is well uh, broken up into the buttermilk and add it to our dry ingredients. So what we want to do is incorporate those wet ingredients to form like a firm shaggy dough. It will be more of a like hefty dough, like a proper bread dough by the time you're finished with it, but it will kind of look a little shaggy and messy to begin with because wholemeal flour is obviously denser than plain flour. So if you've not made a bread with wholemeal flour before, then you might go, this is a little bit different than what I'm used to. Don't stress, that buttermilk mixture will work its way through um, and you will have this like, it will be a little bit of like a crumbly bread mixture, but once, once we're finished incorporating, we'll get there. Whilst we do that, um, the history of Irish brown bread is that it was handed out to the poor during the famine in Ireland because whole meal, or rather as it was known then, brown meal was considered a less desirable product, making it significantly cheaper to feed to more people. And I think that is why it has stayed such an integral part of the Irish diet or cuisine. I think the idea of saying Irish cuisine is like 
we don't really think of that as like a food um, that people seek out but honestly when I was in Ireland I was there um, at the start of winter it was very rainy and very cold and there was almost nothing more satisfying to the soul than stepping into a pub and ordering a soup and it always came with slices of this bread and that is how I came to know and fall in love with this recipe um, and it is so warming and hearty and it doesn't matter what the weather is outside your door if you've got a slice of this and some soup you're good you're satisfied once we have formed our dough we kind of just want to like make sure it is a nicely filled into our tin because it is a lot of a heavier dough it won't like fill out so we want to make sure we push it nice and firmly into our tin um, my hands were a little bit uh, messy by the end of this so you could absolutely just put a little bit of flour on the tips of your fingers just to make sure that they don't stick too much and once we have done that once we've smoothed, smoothed out that top this does not change too much as it bakes so however we leave that top is quite honestly how it will look when it's fully baked so if you want like a nice looking loaf you do want to smooth out the top a little bit and like I'm doing here but if you don't care don't bother with it <laughs> once we've smoothed it out to our satisfaction we want to add a line down the center of our loaf this will help it um, have a nice even shape as it bakes and we're aiming for a half an inch to two thirds of an inch deep here. We don't want it to be too shallow. Then it's ready to bake. So we want to place this in the oven and bake it for 45 minutes until it is beautifully golden. See, that line really helps. We want to let it sit probably on our bench for about 10 minutes before we remove it from the tin. We don't want to let it sit in the tin too long because the heat will make it the bread like soft where it's got this nice crust that's just a little bit of leftover flour on the edges there it is perfect we want we do want to let it cool down properly before we fully slice it um i did not as you will see here it's still a little bit too warm as i slice it to show you the interior but you can see i've got soup ready guys i'm ready to eat this with soup and I do recommend buttering this if you like buttered bread, but I really hope you enjoy this.